In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Hello and warm welcome to all of you dear viewers of Marjayat TV. Stay with us when our episode of program Marjayat Horizon. Stay tuned, watching news, reports and meetings. All regard Grand Jurist, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Hussaini Shirazi. In separate messages to the governments of Iraq and Lebanon, the World Conference of Parliament Speakers in New York, Imam Shirazi World Foundation warned of the problems of these governments and the world. The ISWF addressed some issues in its letters such as the administrative corruptions, discrimination and creation of a national campaign against terrorism. Imam Shirazi World Foundation is a non-profit and non-political organization which sponsors a big variety of cultural, religious, and human rights activities and different institutions working in related fields in Western countries. Imam Shirazi World Foundation envisions a world devoid of violence, extremism, and corruption. And in this regard, it always concerns such acts in different parts of the world, especially the Muslim countries. Lately, Imam Shirazi World Foundation has sent out separate messages to the Iraqi and Lebanese governments and the World Conference of Speakers of Parliament, which is held in New York. In these messages, this organization has warned of the escalating dimensions of administrative corruption in Iraq, demanded the Lebanese authorities to establish concerted efforts in order to tackle the deteriorating conditions of the state, and requested the World Conference of Speakers of Parliament to activate peace treaties, international resolutions related to war on terrorism, and the International Criminal Court. In its message to the Iraqi government, Imam Shirazi World Foundation called change and reformation of the current situation as an important duty of the Iraqi administration, which should not be overlooked. Here comes part of this message. Imam Shirazi World Foundation emphasizes that the Iraqi government must seriously take into effect the suggested reforms and at the other hand, must provide safe and secure environment for the protesters. The foundation adds that the legitimate Iraqi demands must be fulfilled swiftly and quickly without any delays. Imam Shirazi World Foundation also calls all governmental parties to pay attention to the people's demand and to move quickly in fulfilling them. A strategy plan must be put into place so that the corruption would be eliminated once and for all or reduced to its minimum. The grand jury Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi has highlighted that the governmental corruption and mismanaging the people's money will lead to more poverty, diseases, illiteracy, unemployment, and poor services for all people. This non-profit and non-political organization also referred to the deteriorating conditions of the Lebanese people and demanded this country's government and all other players in the country's affairs to respect the dignity of their citizens, do reformations in their domestic policies, and work to improve the worsening conditions of this nation. In another letter to the World Conference of Speakers of Parliament, Imam Shirazi World Foundation expressed his great hopes and regards for this big conference, which can have an effective role in uniting the forces against terrorism and violence. Imam Shirazi World Foundation, in its letter to the World Conference of Speakers of Parliament, referred to the scourge of violence and extremism, poverty and discrimination, dictatorship and suppression, and then called this conference to have a critical mission at this very specific juncture of the humanity age. Here comes a part of this letter. We hope that the nations would hear this world conference to adapt a new attitude which offers practical help to stop the surge of violence and projects to relieve the suffering and limits the suppressive acts of dictators, as dictatorship conceals all development and progress opportunities to the general public. This conference can open up new grounds in the world of politics which are occupied by the dictators at the moment. This austere and constrained political atmosphere has contributed to the spread of terrorism. We wish success for all the peoples of the world and for sustainable security, peace and prosperity. <laughs> Al-Mustaqbal Strategic and Research Center has held its monthly conference under the name of Future Jurisprudence from the perspective of Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi in the holy city of Karbala. In this conference, a group of academics and media figures and activists attend the conference and participants express their own views on the book. Let's watch a report. 
the Al Mustakbal Center for Strategic Studies has held this monthly meeting session and discussed Ayatollah Said Mohammed Shiazi point of view for having a better future by Islam. The future is where everybody is heading towards. The question that arises here is that are we heading towards uncertainty? And if we are heading towards uncertainty, then how can we make the best use of our past for the purpose of the future? We cannot deny that what we have today is the outcome of yesterday and what we will have tomorrow is the result of the decisions that we made today. Nowadays, the advanced civilizations around the world know that they should be trying to make the best use of today for the purpose of tomorrow and the future. The late Grand Ayatollah and jurist Sayyid Muhammad al-Shirazi has written a book about this purpose called The Fiqhul Mustaqbal, The Jurisprudence of Future, in which he discusses the issue that today shapes up tomorrow and we should work toward our future through organized and well-studied plans. Other academics and researchers have pointed out that we need to respond to the Islamic leadership who is calling to reform in the political process which guarantees us a safe and secure future. This meeting was held while many activists, including religious activists, have called on for a reform in the Iraqi political system. So based from this point of view, we have focused on the issue of the Iraq's future and how to have a prosperous future. The book of the late jurist Ayatollah said Muhammad al-Shirazi is a big help for us in this cause. Many tactics and plans are being studied at different levels, all with the aim of a better Iraq. This aim includes better economic, better social life and more security for the country. Benefiting the opportunities is one of the most repetitive concepts of Islam which is both addressed by the Holy Quran and the successive narrations. While speaking to some Shia converts from Africa, the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi emphasized on making the best use of opportunities and called self-purification and guiding people as two outcomes of using these opportunities. We, as human beings, are granted short and unique opportunities to live in this world. So we need to catch up with the fast piece of these seconds passing by in order to make the most of each of these moments. Therefore, many believe the art of living is the most precious gift ever. Through appropriate and substantial comprehension, we came to appreciate this distinctive and God-given opportunity. We need to recognize our real soul and all that is within, and then show appreciation for our Lord's awe. In recent week, the Grand Islamic Authority and jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shuazi was hosting some Shia Muslim converts from Africa. In this brief meeting, the Grand Jurist addressed all the believers and the Islamic scholars and then called their attentions to seizing the moments passing by. After referring to the numerous verses of Quran and the narrations weighing their emphasis on seizing the moments, Ayatollah Shuazi called this worldly life a short but important one and counted correct use of this period as the sign of true faith in the Almighty God. But seizing the moments requires the people to prepare for it. This preparation, as explained by Ayatollah Shuazi, can help the people to cultivate and refine their souls and live a righteous and happy life. The Grand Ayatollah Shuazi furthered his points and said that the first stage of preparing the soul is cultivation and refinement of the soul, and it should be on the agenda. Human soul is a sacred place where divine virtues and values reside in it by nature. Hence, the Almighty God encourages the people to clean their souls from any suit and flith, and on the other hand, fill their souls and hearts with the divine merits and values. Ayatollah Shuazi also hinted that once we acquire a soul that is refined and well cultivated, then we should guide the people and inform them of what is truth. In this part, the scholars have far bigger responsibilities because guiding the societies is a momentous and risky mission. If truth and guidance becomes the destination of this mission, then the societies find prosperity and salvation in every moment of their lives. But if otherwise, then it can jeopardize the destiny of societies and nations. The Grand Ayatollah Shwazi concluded that the guidance of societies can't happen without treasure in all moments of life, cultivating the soul and feeling responsible for the entire society.
قد أفلح من زكى قد أفلح من زكى هذا مؤيبة يعني شكد ما عند الإنسان إخلاص يحاول يصق الإخلاص شكد عند نشاط يصق يزكي نفسه هاي النفس الأمارة بالسوء يزكيها ينميها ينتشلها من الشهوة شهوة الغضب شهوة الغريزة الجنسية شهوة الدنيا شهوة الأكل شهوة الشرب هذه الشهوة هذا واحد الشيء الثاني هداية الآخرة كل عمر الأنبياء عادة كانوا يصرف في هذا كافر يسوي مسلم، مسلم غير مؤمن يهدي الى التشيع الى الايمان، مؤمن شيعي مو ملتزم يهدي. The World Nonviolence Organization Free Muslim has released a statement in which it condemned the human rights violations against the Syrian and Iraqi refugees and demanded the European Union to implement and adhere to the international human rights laws and treaties to protect the refugees. In its statement, the organization demanded the international community to put an end to the refugee crisis. The tip of an almost unprecedented human migration from Syria to the West faces the EU with a moral challenge that is proving ill-equipped to meet. The Europe of Values reflected in the obligation for countries applying for EU membership not just to meet economic tests but to have democratic institutions and a proven respect for human rights is under restraint. Economic recession, the threat of terrorism and the rise of the extreme right are all weakening its institutional underpinnings. High ideals are always at risk from law politics, but this is no abstract question. It is an all too real disaster for hundreds of thousands of Syrians and others who are fleeing war and persecution and have endured perilous journeys to reach the southern fringes of Europe. It could also be a critical test for the EU itself. At this juncture, the Free Muslim Human Rights Center has also warned of the severe conditions of these ill fed refugees who are now kept at the borderlines in bad health conditions. Free Muslim demands EU to comply with the standards of the refugees' situations. The global nonviolence organization Free Muslim expresses its deep displeasure over human rights and humanitarian violations committed by some countries of the European Union against the Syrian and Iraqi refugees fleeing the horrors of war to Europe. This human rights organization has been informed of some strict and arbitrary measures exercised by the Macedonian and Hungary security forces regarding the refugees shelter in this union. In addition, this organization has stated that some of these arbitrary measures have even violated the UNHCR, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees Conventions. It is while these refugees have fled their homelands in the Middle East in search for relief and security. At the moment, there are thousands of men, women and children who are now suffering bad conditions while these European countries don't allow them in. All these measures have put the lives of these refugees at jeopardy due to the low standards of health and other safety requirements. Therefore, Free Muslim Organization calls on the UN Commission and UNHCR to move quickly and save the refugees, as well as obliging countries that violate international laws to have regards for such humanitarian cases in the lives of these innocent people. Free Muslim, Washington DC, US. <laughs> Adam Global Center, an organization dependent to Ayatollah Shirazi, held a conference to discuss the legal ways to pave the way for rebuilding the graves of the holy imams who are buried in Al Baghi Cemetery. This conference enjoyed the presence of a variety of legal, religious, and civil activists in the holy city of Karala. For more on this conference, I invite you to watch this report. 
The Adam Center for Human Rights still holds its discussion sessions occasionally in Karbala, in Al Mawaddal Lecture Hall. The subject of this new discussion session was the legal ways to reconstruct Al Baghi Cemetery. Many experts related to this topic were gathered and they discussed the ways that legally can lead to the reconstruction of the Al Baghi holy site. The issue of reconstruction of Al-Baghi Cemetery site was discussed today. We tried to find legal ways to rebuild the sacred site through international laws of protecting sacred places and sites. As we know, this sacred site contains the pure bodies of many holy and spiritual leaders in Islam, such as the Imams and the Infallibles and the Companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon them all. Some of these Prophet companions either were died at the Prophet's time or later after the Prophet's martyrdom. Today we find that this holy place and site is neglected by the authorities and this is a clear violation of the holiness of this site. The academics and researchers discussed the possible ways to secure and grant the rights of these sacred places, especially that the international laws grants the protection of holy sites. The topic of this session was how to reconstruct the shrines of Prophet's family through the legal means. In this discussion session, we focus on the legal ways and the possible ways that we can reconstruct the holy shrines of Prophet's family the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them. According to the Article 18 of United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it has been explicitly stated that everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom, either alone or in community, with others and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. Others suggested seeking international support for the rebuilding the Baki Cemetery. As we know, a great number of the followers of Ahlul Bayt wish that this holy site to be rebuilt. The conclusion of these discussions will be presented to the lawmakers to take the best course of action regarding these matters. We hope that this issue and matter to be solved in the best possible way, especially that the followers of Prophet's family have been under severe oppressions for many generations and decades. The latest monthly report of Shia Rights Watch organization highlights the activities of terrorist groups and organized actions of some governments against Shias by providing authentic documents to the public, the media and international human rights organizations. Here we offer you a thorough analysis of this report. Shia Rights Watch Monthly Report Shia Rights Watch, SRW, is a human rights organization headquartered in Washington, D.C. This organization has dedicated its efforts for protecting the rights of Shia Muslims in all over the world. Therefore, SRW documents all violations of human rights and oppressions against Shia Muslims and presents them to the International and Human Rights Foundations and the public opinion. In its latest report, this human rights organization highlighted the acts of anti-Shiism taking place across the world in the latest months. Here comes this report. Afghanistan Security still remains an unsolved issue for the Shia community in Afghanistan. During the time of this report, 21 Shia Afghans were killed and 8 others were injured severely when armed men raided a wedding ceremony in the town of Baghlan in the north of the country. This attack was followed by the abduction of 12 Shia Muslims by unknown armed men in the province of Ghazni. It is while Taliban terrorists have abducted and killed four hazardous Shia Muslims in this province in a former attack on this minority in Afghanistan. Ten children lost their lives when a suicide bomber detonated his bomb vest near a camp for displaced people near the town of Herat, west of the country. Eighteen others were also wounded in another blast in a gas station. Jordan Director General of Jordanian Forces discussed with Bahrain's foreign minister on security issues while the human rights organization blamed the Jordanian government for interfering with the domestic issues of Bahrain. Bahraini protesters who demand freedom and reform are now being heavily cracked down by the Jordanian officers who have come to the aid of the Bahraini regime. Jihad al muhsin is now under arrest and harshly tortured after he posted topics about his desire for the Shia Islam and disclosed some information on high-level corruptions. After his resignation from the Ministry of Political Development, the Jordanian writer has faced arbitrary detentions and tortures. Bahrain Bahraini security forces continue closing down on the Shia civilians and protesters who demand democracy and freedom in different cities and villages. 
These crackdowns resulted in the arrest and the injury of several protesters. Regime security forces also attached Shia civilians and protesters at their homes in different areas and arrested people on baseless allegations. Several children were among the detainees. There are seen news of torture and violations of human rights from the notorious prison of Central Ja, where protesters and Bahraini Shia civilians are sentenced to harsh and long-term imprisonments. Syria Terrorists and extremists continue bombarding the city of Dara in Syria. In their latest bombing, 18 civilians were harshly injured and several other people were murdered, among them innocent children and women. The two Shia towns of Nebel and Azara are also targeted by successive bombs launched by the terrorists. The Shias in these towns are being harshly hit since the outbreak of insurgency in Syria. Bombs also fall on two other Shia cities of al Fa and Kafaria on a daily basis. In these attacks, many people lost their lives, including children and women. Yemen Security sources said that a car explosion near the mosque in the Sana capital resulted in the martyrdom of three and injury of six Yemenis. The Daesh terrorists also took the responsibility of another attack on a mosque in the Yemenis capital. Saudi air strikes also killed 10 innocent civilians, including children. Saudi aircrafts bombarded residential areas indiscriminately, which results in the martyrdom of many civilians as well as innocent children. In one single bombardment of Saudi aircrafts on a busy market, 35 civilians were martyred, many others were injured, and big damages were left. Egypt. An Egyptian Salafist figure has published an anti-Shia verdict on social media networks. In his verdict, this Salafist figure has called all Shia Muslims as infidels and death-worthy. He referred to the entire body of the Shia Muslims and encouraged his followers to kill them all. Iraq. Bomb blasts and suicide attacks by Daesh tag freeze are still the most common way for targeting the Shia civilians in different cities of Iraq. During this month, the capital Baghdad has been hit by suicide and car bombs for several times, leaving dozens of men, women, and children murdered, and big damages to the public property. According to security forces, two civilians were wounded when a car bomb went off in north of the capital Baghdad. The sources said that the car was parked on the side of a road in the Baba Sham area. Six other civilians were also killed and 21 were wounded in three successive car bombs. Daesh terrorist group took responsibility of these attacks. In another blast at a busy market in the Diyala town, 10 civilians lost their lives and 10 others were severely injured. Terrorist attacks by Daesh extremists in different cities of Iraq have not ceased since the outbreak of insurgency in this country. And now we're going to watch the most important news all around the world regarding Ayatollah Shirazi in the next part of our program, News in Brief. Late Ayatollah Said Mohammed Shirazi book republished. The book, Eulogies for the 14 Infallible Imams, written by the late jurist Ayatollah Said Mohammed Shirazi, was republished. It is noteworthy that the book is available for the enthusiasts in Arabic language. Activities of Ayatollah Shirazi representative in Turkey Sheikh Mahdi Maj, the representative of Ayatollah Shirazi, traveled to different cities in Turkey and visited their religious and cultural centers and met with their directors. It is noteworthy that Sheikh Mahdi Maj met with the director of Alul Bayt Institution and Hassan Imad din a prominent Shia activist in Antioch, Turkey. He also visited Imam Ali and Imam Hussein mosques and met with the director of these centers. He also participated in the ceremony of Imam Rida birthday anniversary at Imam Hussein mosque and visited the office of Rasul Akram Institution in Istanbul, Turkey. Shiite political activists gathered with members of Ayatollah Shirazi followers office. Shiite political activists gathered with members of Ayatollah Shirazi followers office in the office of Bad Organization in Baghdad, Iraq. During this meeting, the attendees discussed the security and military situation and the need for unity of Shia organizations, the exchange of opinions and ideas, and paying attention to the guidance of the Shia Islamic leadership. In the end of the meeting, the memory of the martyrs was commemorated by reciting the first chapter of the Holy Quran. The al Bayt Institute officials met with religious, cultural, and military figures. A number of officials from the al Bayt Institute met with a number of directors of religious, cultural, and missionary centers in the city of Basra in Iraq. During this meeting, both parties discussed the programs and activities by the centers, not to mention the social situation of Iraqi people. It is noteworthy that these members also visited the voluntary forces in this province. New teaching methods studied at Institute of 14 Infallibles. Following the guidelines of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, the Institute of 14 Infallibles in the Holy City of Karbala reviewed new methods of education for the youth. In this meeting, which hosted a number of scholars, cultural and social figures, Sheikh Abdurrahman delivered a lecture. 
It is noteworthy that the 14 Infallibles Institution is one of the dependent institutions to Ayatollah Shirazi. Head of Baghdad Cultural Islamic Center visits City Council. Mr. Ahmed Aufid, the head of the Cultural Islamic Center in Baghdad, visited the City Council of Shola County and met with its directors. During the meeting, both parties discussed the cultural and religious activities of both centers and emphasized on the need for increasing cooperation between the two organizations. Office of Ayatollah Shirazi in Kabul hosts Ayatollah Mudarsi delegations. During the past few days, the office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in the city of Kabul hosted a number of representatives of the Grand Ayatollah Mohammed Taki Mudarisi and a group of seminary students from Dar Ma'arif Seminary School. During this visit, the guests met with Mr. Mohammed Arif Kusha and discussed the ongoing activities and programs of the office of Ayatollah Shirazi and the Institute of Imam Hadi, peace be upon him, in Afghanistan. It is noteworthy that the representatives of Ayatollah Mudarisi visited Abu Talib Seminary School and Imam Hussein Library. <laughs>
Thanks for watching us. For more information on our daily news about Marjaya TV, you can visit marjayatv.com and its official web pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. May Allah preserve you. Goodbye.